Why, hello there. It has been a while, hasn't it? But, here I am again. Took a small break from Unturned. Yeah, you probably noticed if uh, you looked at my channel last thing, I uploaded anything Unturned-wise. It was like five, four months ago. And I'm sorry about that, alright? Uh, yeah, I, ju I just took a small break from it, that's all. But, I'm back again. And um, I actually brought something pretty juicy. I should probably sort the title of this video. And this is a bit more advanced uh, than what I usually do. It's uh, not for um, people who just started editing their maps. You should probably focus on some other stuff than this. This is if you uh, know what you're doing now. And um, you kind of want to experiment a little with the uh, scaling tool that's in the game. Basically what I made are some um, seaweeds. And uh, what these are, they're um, guns, basically, with radars and stuff that you put on your ships, and they shoot down uh, missiles and other planes and stuff, so it doesn't attack your ship or boat. And if we would just go up here, this is what I haven't shown for you today, uh, not including not including that uh, battle cruiser over there. That's just a part of the map. But here is basically what I got for you today. What I want to start out by saying is that this right here is every everything you see built right here is, has been used with only these parts. And these are definitely the most essential ones. Uh, we're going to start off small. Over here, I've tried to recreate, as you probably can see, it's an M2 Browning, Browning machine gun. Uh, it's a 50 cal heavy machine gun. And it was a design at towards the end of uh, World War One. It's uh, used for um, like putting on vehicles, for example, or having stationary at a base. It's a pretty heavy machine gun, so you don't just walk around with it. It's it's pretty big. It was uh, used in 1933. That was when it was first introduced. And uh, what I've made here today is um. Yes, it's a Browning, and there's three different variants, I guess, right now. It's one where it points up into the sky, one is just uh, normally, and this one's for mounting on the ground. They, it, it even has functional iron sights, I guess you can say. Um, not that you're going to be able to shoot this thing, but, I mean, yeah, you can use it if you want it to. There's a uh, 50 cal box here, that I used uh, to create this with uh, green luggage and yellow books. And then um, I create a little, uh, you know, turnaround thing that makes it able to uh, turn around and stuff, uh, rotate at its axis. Uh, I think this thing here can be used for uh, small military encampments and uh, smaller military bases, or even big military bases up in the towers and stuff. Uh, I think it's a pretty neat little thing. I've been uh, trying to create these for quite a while, actually. Uh, what I've used to create them is, of course, block road one and pipe. That's pretty much everything. And then, of course, this for the uh, uh, box. And under it is a uh, telescope one. And then also canister one. Don't forget that. Uh, that's uh, the M2 Browning for you. It, I, I, it's not my favorite of them all, but I do like how it turned out. Next up, we have the S125 Neva Pechora. Don't know if I said that properly. If someone's Russian, you can correct me with that. Um, it's a uh, it's a Russian uh, surface-to-air missile system. It's a, it's a for short-range missiles only, pretty much, and it's a two-stage uh, missile, so um, it's uh, more maneuverable than its uh, other counterparts. I think it was the S20, S75, I can't remember, but basically these, you can either put them on this kind of pod here and just place them at your airfield or whatever, or your boat, you can do that as well, or you can um, put them on the back of a truck, now I didn't make that, because uh, I didn't, yeah, uh, but it, it, it was used by um, the Soviet Union and for the uh, former satellite states when that split up, etc., and um, the Middle East and stuff like that. Uh, these missiles, there, they can blow up planes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up, we have our first uh, real series, and it's the Kashtan series. In it, um, 
It has two 30mm machine guns, and these can basically tear through tanks if they wanted to. And then it has uh, eight missile parts that it uses to shoot down missiles with. It was made in uh, 1989, so it's still uh, it's a pretty new system still. And um, this thing is uh, it's Russian as well. It uh, is used on the uh, aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov, and the Kirov battle cruiser, as well as the new Strashimi class frigate and uh, China's sovereign enemy uh, class destroyers. This thing, it's pretty, it's pretty freaking deadly since it's, um, it's basically a phalanx, but it has two cannons instead, and it, 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 it's dangerous. All right, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, but next up, uh, we have the uh, phalanx, and this is also a um, 30 millimeter gun. I'm pretty sure it's a G GAU Avenger on it, GAU uh, A Avenger on it, and this big thing here is basically its radar pod. And um, this thing, it, it you, this uh, cannon here was designed for the uh, A10 Thunderbolt 2, I think it was, yeah. And uh, basically, it can uh, also shoot through tanks, but uh, here it's made for um, shooting down planes. Um, it's uh, it's American, of course, so that's um, I got that going for it. Uh, and it uh, it's dangerous. It's uh, it was made in 1980, so it's pretty much it's a little older than the um, Kashtan, but it doesn't have any missiles, you know. So, uh, well, moving on. Next up, we have the uh, uh, Rim Rolling, uh, the RIM uh, 116 Rolling Airframe Missile or RAM, small light fret, uh, lightweight infrared homing to surface to air missile. Also, I forgot to say, uh, basically what I've used to create these are just pipes, canisters, and row blocks. That's all I've used for it. I'll show you how to build one of them, or take it apart or whatever, uh, later. Uh, but basically, this thing, it, uh, it's also an anti-air, uh, and it, um, it, it is, it's also effect, it's a point defense against anti-ship cruise missiles so this missile shoots down missiles basically so if you got like a if a plane comes in and drops an anti-ship missile this thing is going to be what's taken out if not the other ones uh, next up is definitely uh, my favorite that i've made and that's the uh, goalkeeper suez and this this thing's dutch so it's from the netherlands it was an introduced uh oh in uh, in 1979, so just one year uh, older than the uh, Phalanx, but I like this thing just because of how it looks. I think it's it looks pretty damn awesome in my opinion, and the way I've made it in this game as well, it's pretty cool. Uh, I've even done some things with this, so you can um, you can pretty much do this with everything actually. Uh, you can rotate the uh, thing itself, just make sure that you have it all selected, and then um, look at that. Go up and down. As you can see. And um, you can even do the same with the radar here. Or sonar or... I don't... I'm not sure what it is up here. There we go. And um, since it was my favorite, I decided to try and uh, put it on some tanks here. And it actually looks pretty cool as you can see. I, I do really like it. Uh, you can put it on multiple different tanks as well, and it's the uh, Seawiz Goalkeeper. It's another uh, 30 millimeter, um, so it uses the same barrel as the Phalanx, and uh, it's uh, again it's Dutch and it's used by a lot of people, including the um, including America as well. But um, and yeah, it, it, I think it, I think it's pretty awesome. Next up, we have the TOS-1A, and this thing, I'm telling you, it's a beast, it's a freaking, it's a freaking beast, pretty much, uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's a 220mm, 30 barrels, I'm pretty sure it didn't make 30 barrels, but in real life it has 30 barrels, and, um, or 24 barrels for the uh, TOS-1A, Multiple rocket launcher, 
in a thermobaric weapon. It's on a T-72 chassis, uh, which is basically this one, so I thought that was a pretty good idea to make this one. And uh, it's actually a heavy flamethrower, and you might think, why is it a he heavy flamethrower? That doesn't make any sense. But that's because that it's uh, when it shoots, it uh, explodes into a, like, a fuel explosion. So uh, there, a bunch of gas uh, comes out of the, um, or gas or liquid, comes out of the, um, the missile itself. And then uh, it gets ignited, and it creates a, a huge air pressure, which is equivalent to um, a pretty big explosion. And it has like a, um, it has a, a range of 10 kilometers or something. And it's just, it's a fuel air explosive mixture in the warhead. And it's deadly, all right? It's deadly. And it, it kills you very badly. And what I made it with was uh, with Russia crate, and I just rescaled them so I could be able to uh, make this. Oh yeah, and if you haven't noticed, no mods are involved in this, not a single one. I even tried to make a, uh, a desert variant of it, and it looks pretty good as well. Again, uh, like this stuff here is for the browning. Uh, this here is for the um, the uh, Neva Pachora, and this here is for the uh, TOS flamethrower, and this here is just for all of them, pretty much. I even uh, try to kill them out on some uh, some uh, an aircraft carrier here and um, point them in some different directions. And uh, this is how it will look if you try to put them on an aircraft carrier. As you can see right here, it's uh, it actually looks pretty damn cool. Next up, we just have a little uh, a little silo here. I thought I'd make. I just decided to do it for some reason. Don't ask me why. It's uh, <coughs> basically just a silo door. And there's an open variant and a closed variant. There's not really uh, not really much to say about it, to be honest. But uh, I've also tried to uh, put some of my things on my location here. So first up, it's a um, anti-air sight right here in the middle of nowhere, which just uh, shoots down uh, planes and stuff, you know, because why not? <laughs> and yeah, basically. Uh, that's uh, what it's about, and um, I've also got over here at the airfield, I've placed a TOS-1A, if you load in, here we go, at the uh, Russian airfield, as well as there's a uh, Kashtan series. Uh, I'm pretty sure they usually wouldn't place um, these kind of things on land, but I don't really care. <laughs> um, so yeah. This time it's at a submarine base. Uh, as you can see right here, it's uh, I've put some um, barricades around it, so it's like a tank right there. But it's pretty much stationary; it's not going anywhere with the the series on it. And I think that's pretty much it. There's not really much else to say. I hope you enjoyed this guide. I hope it was useful. You maybe came up with some ideas on your own. Ah, it took me a little while, so please do show me some support down in those comments. And, I'm telling you right now, if you have some more ideas, make sure to leave them down there. I'll try to make them happen. If I get enough, I might even make an, an episode 2 of this series. It can be anything, though. It can be ideas for anything. Uh, nothing is off limits, pretty much. Just not weird stuff, right? <laughs> I know you have your kinks and all, but try and keep an yourself we're gonna have it family friendly here and um i just want to say thank you for watching and um yeah, i'm back woohoo